Hi, I'm Adam. I'm a Manitoba PA working in general surgery at the Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Where do you work now as a PA? So uh, currently as a PA, I work at the Health Sciences Centre, like, and that's, that's home for me. Uh, it's a tertiary care facility in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, the facility uh, services uh, most of Canada, the north as well. Um, we provide specialty services in, in multiple fields from uh, neurological surgery to surgical subspecialties to uh, specialized medicine as well. Um, I got my position in the uh, Department of Surgery, General Surgery, and I split my time between two subspecialties, uh, one being uh, surgical oncology, which uh, focuses on predominantly GI malignancy, so we see a lot of gastric cancer, a lot of colon cancer. Um, we also run clinics uh, uh, for breast health, uh, focusing on uh, breast cancers as well, um, as well as melanoma clinics where we, we have a have a little section of, of dermatology that we focus on, mainly melanoma, um, and we follow patients there. My other appointment, I usually, I, myself and other PA work on, this, on, on the two services, and just as in an effort to allow us to keep our skill sets up in both, we usually switch every three months to, to these opposite services. We're all stationed on the same wards, but uh, you know we just switch for a little bit of, it uh, keeps things fresh. And, that other specialty is uh, HPB or uh, hepatico-pancreatical biliary surgery, so liver pancreas and bile duct surgery. And again, it is also a, a surgical subspecialty um, uh, based in surgical oncology, so a lot of pancreas cancers. Um, we also do a lot of the same overlap stuff uh, the green surgery will do, um, including gastric cancers, um, but predominantly focused on, on the HPB aspect. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were first hired as a fresh new grad, yeah. how did they orient you to the service once you were hired? <laughs> yeah, um, before my before before my arrival uh, in the general surgery program, there was no experience with PAs. They had a clinical assistant uh, who had been working there for some time, but the role wasn't as broad, and it was uh, it was quite different than what um, what the attendings envisioned for a PA coming on. So it was, it was, we were breaking kind of new ground uh, and it was a lot of learning back and forth. So it, how I got oriented uh, was, was me showing up uh, my first day at seven in the morning uh, to the ward. Uh, my attending was there and you know, we had our introductions again. We had last seen each other at the interview process. And I remember this uncomfortable silence and I, I looked at him like, so what do you envision my role being here? And it's kind of a laugh, and, and the attending was like, well, "What do you envision your role being here?" So it was um, it was fun. At that moment, I realized that wow, this is this is a job that can kind of carve out my own niche as well, and and, and try to offer offer services which are going to improve efficiencies and patient care. Um, so it was it, it was. It, it's, it's an odd way to start a new job, but you know, in retrospect, it's like, yeah, this is a new profession. They didn't have experience with this. And like I said, it's a great opportunity to kind of like build that job around kind of what I wanted to do. And then it's just evolved over time, you know, demonstrating competencies, building up your own skill set. And then it's, it's amazing, you're, you know, if, it was, if there was a schematic, it'd be like arrows coming out about how you branch out and the diversity of your job and the different skills you end up uh, picking up and procedures you do. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. The, my, my first day, especially, I was kind of scratching my head. I'm like, wow, like this is new ground. Mm. Was there any shadowing that was involved, or did you hit the ground running, seeing patients right away? Hit the ground running. Um, <laughs> shortly after uh, meeting with uh, my attending on my first day, it was you know okay, we went over kind of things. I was very familiar with the clinical systems, having worked at the health sciences for quite some time over many years. Um, but I remember my attending was like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to let you read up on the patients. Um, I'm going to go to the operating room. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really relied on, um, on other team members from the multidisciplinary team to kind of, you know, piece together and, and, and learn from them where other aspects aside from, you know, the surgery part and the medical side, where else I can pinch in and, and hopefully create better system efficiencies. So, you know, I, I had an easy in with the nursing crew because, you know, I, I had that, I was able to relate in that way. Um, having been a nurse, um, it was touching base with social workers, physiotherapists, and kind of 
advocating for myself from a selfish perspective, uh, with, with the secondary, you know, the intention being like, you know, to like create awareness about PAs and kind of see, you know, what can I do to complement their their work um, or the care that they're delivering, and you know, like, how do we make things better? So. The, the, the biggest assistance came from, as far as ward management and the, the little details, the scut work of the job, uh, came from collaborating with other people who are, who are doing what I'm doing, um, or who are doing a lot of the traditional roles uh, that, that they've done for a long time, and trying to pinch, pinch in there and find out what I can do. And would you say that initially when you were starting, was your role very similar to that of a resident or, um, or a fellow? Yeah, um, when I started off I was, I was you know, the, the goal was to get, uh, get the physician assistants helping in, in a few main areas and that was number one, the biggest need was, was uh, on the ward because, you know, as a tertiary care hospital with, with medical residents, as a surgical residents, um, you're trying to also facilitate their learning too and allowing them to have a better experience in the operating room where they're learning to be surgeons. So the big part, the initial phase was to kind of cover that ward aspect and you know there's concerns about patient care suffering when, when teams are caught in the OR and you know discharges get delayed. So I started off kind of mainly focused on uh, on ward based work, uh, management of patients in the perioperative uh, kind of period, you know, before surgery, after surgery, um, dealing with uh, basic assessments, lab interpretation. Uh, and then once kind of my core was was my, my, my core skill set from you know the medical aspect aspect uh, of the management of surgical patients was kind of solidified and my attendings were happy then I started branching into uh, other roles and that's where I started to feel more like a resident. Um, uh, former director Russ Ives said you know he had a good description we always struggle how to describe you know, ourselves as, 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 as physician assistants and he had a quick one and it was you know I'm a resident who never leaves and I, I, I feel that way myself now um, as my team's confidence in, in my skills uh, you know evolved I start to branch into into different things you know seeing consults doing procedures unsupervised um, working in clinics, going to the operating room, and just gaining more more autonomy uh, and less direct supervision at all times. Um, so initially, I felt more like a like a like a medical student, and then you know pretty pretty quickly, I, I became you know a, a junior resident, and now I feel like I'm you know at, at a at a more senior resident kind of level with you know the tasks I do. It's it's we're all running around the hospital, all pinching in, and all trying to help out and get it done. Can you describe a typical day in the life or week in the life of your work? Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. I always tell people it's, 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 it's heterogeneous and never, you know, when, when I talk to students, I say, I'll tell you what my week's like, but don't, uh, don't think that that's the same right across the board. If you don't like what I do, well, you know, don't think that's just the profession. But um, a week in my life, day in my life, uh, depending what service I'm on, uh, usually come in. We round as a team on the patients, and we can have anywhere between uh, three patients uh, on the ward because it's a surgical subspecialty to as much as 20 patients. The average being probably probably close to about 12 or so. So we round on the patients. As a team, we 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 sit down after rounds are done. We come up with a plan where to allocate our human resources, whether it be PA students, med students, residents. Uh, we make a decision about who's going to the operating room based on uh, experience, uh, the cases that are going on. Um, some people will go to the ward. A lot of the times, uh, if we have a big resident team, they'll take priority. They'll go to the operating room and get in their, their index cases, the big ones that they have to know before they graduate. Um, a lot of my day, if I'm, if I'm on the ward that day, I will be doing my own second set of rounds, usually in the afternoon. I arrange diagnostics. Uh, small procedures on the ward, opening wounds, assessing patients, uh, hopefully uh, not having to run codes but kind of dealing with uh, the daily unpredictable things. Um, consults are another part of, uh, part of the job. Uh, I usually have most pages coming to myself. I'm territorial uh, so when I'm on the ward I like to kind of know what's going on along, around the facility if we have any bounce back. So a lot of time we'll get calls in the emergency room, see a patient that unfortunately may have come back with a wound infection assess them. If it's something I feel confident in, uh, it'll be a quick call, a call to, the, uh, to my attending, kind of review them, send them on, bring them in. Um, 
Another aspect would be clinic days as well too, depending again on our human resources that day. Uh, you know, it can get pretty busy, you know, you're juggling ward stuff and also running uh, to a clinic and seeing uh, seeing patients in a, in a, in a, in a 40, 40 patient clinic uh, in, in, in melanoma or breast health, which is really involved. I mean, like I said, we're a surgical subspecialty team, so it's, it's, it's really detailed assessments and then, you know, collaborating with the team, coming up with a plan. And then running off to the uh, to the to the operating room if need be. You know, sometimes the attendings get called in for their expertise in another room, and then you know my pager goes off as, "Hey, can you come to the operating room and help out here?" So uh, a bit of a jack of all trades, but uh, you know that's 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 a, that's a, something I really enjoy in surgery. You get your hands dirty, and you can also sit there and and think and scratch your head and be very academic about things on the ward. So it's a great mix. What are some common conditions you see? Common conditions we see, uh, again, it's going to be subspecialty service specific depending on which one I'm on. Um, we see a lot of uh, GI malignancies, a very common thing would be uh, bowel tumors. Um, most of the clientele we see are, are non-acute cases where, where, where elective surgery, uh, usually cancer-based surgeries. We do a lot of uh, gastric cancer, uh, subsequently work up patients proceeding towards uh, um, coming up with a plan in conjunction with the medical oncology and radiation oncology teams, uh, planning chemotherapy, radiation, whatever is appropriate for that case, and then eventually moving on to a surgical plan. Um, like I said, all GI malignancies. Um, the, 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 the sexier part of the job, I always say, is, is and it, doesn't get a, it doesn't get as much attention as cardiology, but is the, the, the liver surgeries. Um, some of the procedures we do are, are absolutely fascinating and very large and and require a, a level of expertise that is, 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 is mind-blowing. We do Whipple procedures for uh, pancreatic cancer, pancreatic head lesions. Um, we just started doing a procedure called HIPEC or uh, heated intraperitoneal extracorporeal uh, chemotherapy. So it's a large uh, surgery where we infuse chemo into patients' abdomens, again for GI malignancies do fairly extensive cytal reductions, fairly extensive resections, uh, and then you know take that patient from the operating room and, and, and hopefully get them home after a, a moderately long stay. Uh, but yeah, the, the bulk of my, my practice is based on GI malignancies uh, as elective cases. So in the OR, are you first assist or are there some things that uh, you hmm. might do if a second surgeon would as well? Yeah, great question. And I find people who are interested in surgery, they'll ask a lot, um, you know, like, that question am I going to be first is like what do you do in the OR because you know people want to come into the OR they you know newly graduated PAs they want to use their skill set and they want to build their skill set and it's it's not a lot of fun to just be standing there and holding a retractor which a lot of us end up doing in our in our early clinical rotations but no most definitely uh, when I come into a case uh, I'm, I'm 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 first assist uh, as first assist uh, you're working you know directly across from your attending. Um, you are more involved and our surgeons are great and as, as their confidence is built uh, in, in my abilities, you know, they ask you for legitimate uh, opinions during the procedure. Like, what is this? What do you think we should do? And it's a great learning opportunity. Um, bottom line is, if it's not really busy on the ward, even if we have a full OR with, uh, with multiple different learners, it's still a good opportunity and not to like kind of say holding a retractor there's 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 no benefit in there i'll go in there a lot when uh, i don't have much going on in the ward and i will stand there and i'll hold a retractor or i'll just spectate because it's a great learning opportunity you don't get an anatomy lesson uh, anywhere like you do in the operating room with an open abdomen and it's it's there's you have to seek out your own learning opportunities but yeah it, wor working as a as a as first assistant in the operating room is definitely one of the uh, more exciting parts of the job it's uh, do you open, close, stitch, or things like that? Uh, it's going to really depend on the complexity of the case. Um, and this is going to vary by practice as well, too. I, we have a huge amount of physician assistants working in plastics, and their surgical, their, 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 their surgical skills are, are just absolutely exceptional and mind-blowing. Um, as far as my own contributions in the operating room, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, opening, closing. 
uh, a lot of the cases, especially the, the less complicated ones, and it depends on the surgeon. You know, you, you develop a reputation, you develop your skills, they get more confident, and you, um, you know, we have a lot of utility there in allowing the physician at the end of the case to leave the room, um, move on, see the next patient, maybe go help in another operating room suite. Uh, and as a physician assistant, even having a med student there, I have an opportunity to show med students and, you know, contribute to their learning, showing them how to close an abdomen. Uh, and freeing up the physician's uh, time, essentially, which is a, a key a key role of a, of a PA is to increase that system efficiency. So yes, opening, closing, uh, putting in drains, um, taking the patient out of the operating room. Yeah. And outside of the OR, what are some procedures that you do? Yeah, uh, typical procedures, again, service specific, depending on where I'm at at that time, we'll do uh, like wide local excisions of, of certain types of lesions in our procedure room in the cancer care uh, area. Um, a lot of the time it's, it's, there's a physician nearby uh, or I'm, I'm, I'm doing a small case with a, with a learner, with a junior learner, and we're kind of going over it. Um, but yeah, so wide local excisions of various different dermatological lesions. Uh, on the wards, uh, doing things such as uh, paracentesis, um, assisting with very minor things as well too, like NG insertion, uh, IV insertion, uh, central line insertion. Um, we're a little spoiled at health sciences and we have a lot of uh, specialty teams that come in and do a lot of these tasks. Um, other procedures uh, that I'll do on the ward, uh, the opening of wounds which are infected, irrigating, debriding, um, a whole host of things. Every It's, it's truly um, everything perioperative that you can that you can think of. Why did you come into this position having those skill sets and being able to do them independently or how how was that incorporated into your job? Yeah um, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the other skills um, you know like NG tube insertion, uh, IV insertion um, those are things that I traditionally did as a nurse so I was very comfortable doing that but uh, I remember the first time I opened up a wound and I just thought it was the coolest thing. And you know, all it is now is popping a few staples and sticking some forceps in there. But you know, how I, how I learned that it's, um, it, it's, a, it's an outdated mentality that stems from old school medicine. It's the see one, do one, teach one. And uh, I, I don't think it's sufficient in this day and age um, to go by that model. But it, you know, admittedly, a lot of my skills I picked up were the see one, do one, teach one. Uh, fortunately, I worked with a lot of residents, a lot of senior residents, so even though I wasn't necessarily directly learning from my attending, uh, at times, you know, I would I had great opportunities to kind of go in there with a, with a senior resident and we talked about procedural skills. And yeah, I think I, I, I saw one and then later on that afternoon I did one and now I teach them. But uh, yeah, we always have to be careful when learning new skills because we have to be not only confident um, that we're going to do it right, but we have to be confident to, to know what to do if something goes wrong. Uh, and that's just part of our own personal, uh, our professional responsibility. I'm an Ontario PA, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and you work in Manitoba, and yes. in Manitoba PAs are regulated. So what is regulation and how does it impact PA practice? Yeah, <clears throat> so there's, uh, there's a lot of terms like thrown around in this, in this, uh, in this conversation. There's registration, there's regulation, there's law. Um, so regulation in Manitoba, what PAs are regulated through uh, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba. Um, what regulation um, is meant to do, it's the primary, primary purpose of regulation is to protect the public. Um, regulation uh, focuses around tasks uh, and job scope appropriate things for different uh, members in whatever field you're talking about, whether it's, it's, it's regulation for, for lawyers or regulations for, for medical personnel. Um, it's, it's important um, to me, it's, it's a level of accountability, it's, it's part of accountability and, 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 and transparency as well, uh, which is very important when you're dealing with, um, with the public and you know, the, the potential to do harm in, in healthcare is 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 abs it's, it's high. It's a legitimate concern, and regulation is um, it, it's a it's a measure to protect the public from having harm done to them uh, in, in in medical practice. Uh, it's hard to tease. There, there are nuances nuances to it, but uh, what impact uh, do patients, staff, the department notice or benefit from from having PAs mm. working with them? 
the feedback, and I'm always cautious with with the feedback because it's 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 anecdotal. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we have as as, as PAs is is the tracking, the contributions we make to the system. You know, we we, we should be increasing efficiency, and it's hard to kind of track that with physicians. Uh, at least in Canada, we don't have our own billing number, so it's kind of hard to like kind of figure out exactly what we're doing. But anecdotally speaking, you know, we, I, I get great feedback. I, I wish I wish some some people were tracking these numbers, though. But um, nursing staff will say, you know, you know, time 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 to discharge has been shortened because they're not waiting for uh, residents or physicians coming out of the OR at the end of the day when all other services are shut down. Um, uh, complaints, I was told um, by by one of our. Um, Patient advocates, they, 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 I think they've been, been tracking. They're saying that uh, complaints coming from the wards where PAs are working are actually down. Although I've never seen that data myself. Um, uh, the, the, the biggest thing is is just having the, the biggest biggest piece of feedback I get uh, from the multidisciplinary team is that it's it's just such an asset to have a clinician that's available. Um, Pretty much all the time uh, with the ward uh, ward aspects and, and the management of patients perioperatively, and kind of facilitating that transition home or transfers or getting little procedures done and paperwork done. Um, but yeah, I, I would really like to see uh, this studied uh, and scrutinized a little bit more and, and getting some data on it so that we can truly show our worth, especially uh, in, in a time when when there are a lot of healthcare cuts and, and reshaping of the healthcare system, especially in Manitoba.